Day 5. Time, approximately 9.30 a.m. Location, downtown Sun Cube City. Yay! Go faster, pretty cow! I want to go faster! The left head of the Brahmin sighed and threw a desperate look towards the nearby unicorn with a black hat. The pony sniggered at the cow and waved a hoof, dismissing her mute complaint. It's the deal. No grudges. Give the foal one last ride, then bring it to my office. All right, Mr. White. The cow sullen began to trot around the outside of the White Tower, a journey she had made several times in the past half hour. The ponies on the street were busy repairing the damages from last night's shockwave, but the filly in yellow still drew a lot of attention from them, and the glares also arrived, low muttering words. I know her. She's that ghost from the carnival. She cursed the ghouls. And that fool brings bad luck. Look, she's making a fool out of white apples. I bet on my cap she's blackmailing him with something that she discovered inside the dome. Have you seen? The glow disappeared and then... Then the ghoul's airship exploded. They tried stealing something but it backfired. Filthy ghouls. They deserved that one. Yes, but what is she? Don't ask. I've never seen her eat or even open that helmet. I don't know what that means, but I'm sure that she's up to nothing good. Shush! She's coming this way! Puppy Smiles was having a good time and didn't care about the strange glances. It's unlikely that she'd even noticed them. That was super fun, Mrs. Cow. Can we do it again sometimes? One of the two cowheads nodded. Sure, but you'll have to ask Mr. White. He's waiting for you in the office. And just go inside and take the door. The other heads continued to ruminate. Mr. White's office was a large, clean affair, sporting a variety of pictures decorating the walls and a mahogany desk, so highly polished that you could see your own reflection in it. Whoa! And this place is super duper fine, Mr. White! The chief of the White Apples was a male unicorn with a black hat on his head. His coat was white and his mane was cyan. Well, thank you, Miss Days. This name won a puzzled look from Puppy, so Mr. White elaborated. The voice from the dome last night said that your mom was named Rainy Days. So I imagine that your full name is Puppy Smiles Days, isn't it? Puppy slowly nodded and tilted her head. Yeah, it is. Now I have to go. Miss Voice put a new arrow on my compass and I have to follow it. Can I go, please? White sighed and lowered the hat in front of his eyes. Sure, obviously. But I'd like to ask you one last thing. What was the glow inside the dome? Ah, you mean the salt cube? Puppy giggled as if she found that question funny. You silly pony. Haven't you ever seen the salt cube of Salt Cube City? I mean, you live here. Duh. The older pony felt an urge to raise his voice, but the filly had a very simple mind, and scolding her was useless at the moment. Instead, he smiled. I must admit that I've never made it inside the dome. It's a bit... scary, if you wish. So the ghouls took away the salt cube on their vessel. Another puzzled look from the foal. The flying balloon. Puppy nodded. Yep. They took the cube, and then they... Did so in quite a hurry, too. They're all talking about a cascade or something about a D. Uh, D tuna show? Probably they didn't seem very happy with the last term. Something like that. I can't remember. But they were saying that they had to go away before it happened because it was dangerous. Detonation, maybe? Yes, they said deton. uh, D ton. uh, that one. Anyway. It was inside the cube, and they all wanted to go away with it super fast. I helped them. The blue-maned pony raised an eyebrow. They wanted to go away as fast as possible with a time bomb. I, I knew the ghouls were crazy, but I didn't think that they were going to go this far. Oh well, I guess that explains why the radioactivity around the dome is fading. Mr. White smiled thoughtfully. You did a good job, little one. I'd like you to stay a little more, but if you want to go so badly, I guess I'll let you follow your road. 
Okie dokie, Mr. White. Bye bye. I'll tell my mom that you were super nice with me. Sure. Have a nice trip, little one. Sorry if I'm still a bit curious, but where will you go? Puppy pointed a hoof southward. There. My mommy is just on the other side of the arrow. No. Oh, straight into the marshes. Good luck and take care. She was so dead. The marshes were the worst area in the northern branch of the Big 52, and a foal alone was just going to be some rad gator's breakfast. It was a pity to waste the rad suit, but the white apples were not raiders. Mr. White stopped a moment, pondering that last thought. The filly was already going away, but something in the little pony made him regret having used her so badly. She probably saved the tribe from something way worse than the ghouls, and he'd given her what? Just a cow ride and not even a forewarning of the incoming danger? Not fair. Hey, Miss Days, wait a moment. I have something for you. Day 5. Time. Approximately 11.30 a.m. Location. Salt Cube City. Outskirts. Big 52. North Branch. We. A yellow bolt dashed across the road riding a red scooter. The last houses of Salt Cube City's suburbs zipped past Puppy Smiles, leaving a landscape of abandoned cornfields in their stead. And please keep in mind, once you reach Happy Straw, you'll have to take the detour. The route through the swamps is blah 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 blah. And remember, don't try in any cases to cross the blah blah boring. The fairly propelled vehicle zoomed directly south, and, since the scooter wasn't loud enough by itself, Puppy was providing the sounds. Whoosh! Zoom! Straight to the moon! Space Captain Andromeda to the rescue! Yay! Ahead of the foal in yellow, the road ran through rotten fields and ruined farms, straight as a sunbeam heading towards her objective. After a hoofful of kilometers, the fields became a barren land dotted with dead trees and small pools filled with murky water. Here and there rose a shack or a small camp, but they all seemed old and abandoned. There was some life in the area, but it mostly consisted of insects and other nasty creatures that instinctively let the puppy alone. What was not seemingly eager to ignore puppy smiles was a sprite bot that stood right in the middle of the road about a hundred meters in front of her. Beep, beep, I'm a jeep. Space pony incoming. The sprite bot seemed to ignore this information, but Puppy wasn't the kind of fool that stopped for anything while she was having fun. The yellow bolt simply kept going at top speed in her brand new scooter. The sprite bot dodged at the very last moment and seconds later was following on Puppy's heels, trying to keep up with her pace. Hi, Puppy. Are you in a hurry? A familiar voice came from the sprite bot's speakers. Questioner! I was missing you. Have you seen my new scooter? Puppy giggled, still cruising at top speed. I knew another talking robot, but this one was funny. Well, it wasn't actually a robot. I'm not sure. How wonderful. Uh, care if I ask you something? The sprite bot didn't wait for a reply. What happened to the dome? And what was that explosion east of Salt Cube City? Hey, could you stop moving for a moment? Please? Puppy sighed and slowed down. Gee, I was having fun. After stopping and jumping from her brand new ride, the filly tapped her helmet as if it was her chin while thinking about Watcher's question. What happened at the dome? I made a lot of friends. Mr. Boss Sandbox, Mr. Airsoft, Miss Peach Blossom, oh, and Miss Voice. Wasn't it Mr. Voice? Watcher tried. No, silly robot. There's a Mr. and Mrs. Voice. She had to stay in the dome, but Mr. Voice can call her whenever I need. She's super cool and helped me with a goodbye party for the ghoulie ponies. Oh, another pony machine interface routine. So you met these ghouls and threw them a goodbye party? What do you mean by that? Did you help them launch that airship? Yush! Probably not enthusiastically. It was super great. I was looking from the window, and there was this huge thing that went up, 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 up into the sky. Puppy spread her front legs to show how large the ship was, and reared up on her hind legs to show how high it was. 
but she went too far and fell on her haunches, giggling. There was all those lights, and I heard my voice super loud. So I said, la la la, and goodbye, ghouly ponies, and then they all went away. It was scootastic. Scooter. What? Scootastic. Is that even a word? Scootisher. You know, I don't think that this scooter was good for your pretty head. The watcher's voice betrayed the slight trace of concern. Back to the topic. What about the explosion? What explosion? Puppy tilted her head, frowning a bit. You mean the roof thingy that went down? No, I... Wait a second, another roof fell on your head? This piece of information took Observer by surprise. Yep. After the roof opened and the balloon went away, the piece went all squeaky and bang, right on my head. Puppy giggled. But I'm a super space pony, so I dug my way out. I'm just that good. The filly smiled proudly. There was a short laugh, and then a sigh from the robotic speaker. Oh, well, everyone has their talents. So, where are you going now? To the next mom's place, obviously. Third time's the charm! A sudden pair of gunshots echoed through the air. The bullets didn't hit anywhere near Puppy or Watcher, but the filly heard them loud and clear. Hey, what was that? I... Sorry, Puppy, I have to go. There must be raiders somewhere. You'd better hide and wait till this firefight ends. A firefly? Where? I love fireflies. Puppy immediately launched herself into a frantic search, jumping all around. Ah, please, Celestia, keep her safe. The voice from the sprite bot was replaced by a fizzing mat music, and the drone simply started to drift away. The sounds of gunshots came from above Puppy's head, and when she looked up, she saw an incredible scene. Two big flying ponies were dancing around, and making fireworks, like a majestic ballet. The sight took Puppy by surprise. Back to the day that Mom took her to the flying grounds and there were all the pretty pegasi flying and making super fun things in the air. This time was more or less the same. Well, actually not the same, but there were some flying ponies and there were lights and little noises, so Puppy immediately classified the whole thing as top-tier entertainment. But all the figures were pretty big and didn't seem like pegasi at all. The fool frowned and asked, Hey, Mr. Voice, what's wrong with these ponies? Analyzing. Friendly Griffins. Puppy hadn't the slightest idea what a griffin was, but if the voice told her that they were friendly, then it was A-OK. -okay. The filly in yellow waved a hoof, trying to get their attention. Hey, pretty ponies, I'm here. Hey. One of the creatures turned and looked down the road, lowering his guard for a moment. He was shot by another of the creatures and went down, spinning. Ah, let's see. One, two, three... Puppy tried to count the remaining griffins, but they were a bit too fast for her taste. So she decided to trot up to where their friend landed. Drawing next to the creature, the foal noticed that it wasn't a pony at all. It looked like some strange half-beast, half-eagle, half-lion. So she decided that it looked funny. Hi, Mr. Chicken! The creature didn't move. A large pool of blood was forming under his body. Puppy poked him with a hoof. Hey, something's wrong? There was no reaction. Uh, Mr. Chicken, wake up. Rise and shine. Still nothing. This couldn't be good, but the worst part was that his friend didn't seem to notice. Something had to be done. Hey, chickens, your friends here hurt. Come down! Puppy cried with all her breath, and waved both hooves in the air, trying to get some help. Obviously, they ignored it. The remaining three griffins continued their dance, with bullets and blood in the sky above her head. Ah, they're too busy having fun, and they don't hear me. Puppy sighed. If only I had something to catch there. Wait a moment, I have it! The puppy smiled, recalling the shiny thing that Mr. White gave her. What was its name? Nine miles meter? Name meme leaders? Uh, Mr. Voice, give me that shiny thing that makes a lot of noise. Warning. Object puppy smiles cannot be retrieved from inventory. Hey, you're not very nice. You know what I mean. That thing, the 
The nanny, my leaders. You know, the one thing for Mr. White. Affirmative. Retrieving 9mm semi-automatic pistol. The gun floated in front of Puppy. The filly grabbed the iron with her hooves and pointed it at the sky. Hey! Hey! Listen to me! How does this thing work? How does it do the noisy stuff? Loading instructions for shooting mode. Time crisis. Point your gun at the target. Then pronounce the word fire, or bang, and the gun will shoot. If you need reloading, put your weapon in the inventory and extract it again. Ah, uh, sounds easy? Puppy pointed at the griffin. Bang! Eep! Recoil sent the gun flying out of Puppy's hooves. It bounced against her helmet, falling on the ground a couple of meters in front of her and knocking the filly down on her rump. One of the griffins screamed in pain. Fuck! He has backup! Kill that snipe! The creature didn't finish the sentence. His head exploded into a cloud of blood. Now there were only two griffins dueling in the sky, but the battle itself was becoming a lot more personal. The two griffins engaged each other in melee, biting and slashing with their talons. Puppy trot over to the new fallen griffin and noticed that his head was missing. Do you know, Mr. Voice? I don't think they're playing. Is this chicken, uh, dead? Affirmative. And, uh, Puppy frowned. That other chicken there? Puppy pointed at the ground. At the other griffin. Is he dead too? Analyzing. No vital signs detected. The subject is dead. Puppy's eyes rose again into the sky where the last two griffins were fighting. And those two are trying to hurt each other? Affirmative. Every clue leads to the conclusion that they are fighting each other to the death. Okie dokie. Puppy paused for a moment, pondering the situation. How do we make them stop? Ooh, I have an idea! Puppy took a deep breath. Please stop fighting! Somebody could get hurt! Actually, somebody had already gotten hurt. Well, mostly some griffin, but... Puppy wasn't focused too much about the details, and the two surviving fighters didn't seem to pay attention to Puppy anyway. From the filly's point of view, it was quite hard to say what was going on, but one of the two let out a high-pitched scream, and then they both began to fall into a rapid spin, like a whirlybird seed. Puppy jumped onto her scooter and launched herself on the chase, trying to see where they fell. When she reached them, she found quite the scene. One of the two griffins lay on the ground, his chest torn open from the left side and his throat cut. The other creature was struggling to get to his feet, but was losing too much blood from a multitude of wounds. Hey, Mr. Chicken, are you all right? The filly rushed over to the struggling griffin as he fell to the ground, coughing. You don't seem all right. <coughs> you, you're the fool that shot. Thank you. Puppy frowned. I... What? Please, <laughs> listen carefully. There is my daughter in the military. <laughs> South. The griffin's breaths were deep and labored, bringing them to a gurgling sound, causing them to cough again. Henrietta, she is waiting for me there. <laughs> I beg you, go there. Give her this. The griffin landed uh, and handed a puppy out her gun. This one was heavier than the one she owned, and was all black with a red line along the barrel. Uh, okie dokie? Puppy poked the griffin. But sure, you gonna be better? You. Are you stupid or what? I'm dying. Another burst of coughs and blood interrupted this creature. Tell... Tell Henrietta that I wanted to go south with her. Tell... Tell her that I... <laughs> tell her that I... His voice faded, and with it the spark in the griffin's eyes disappeared. Puppy waited a moment and tried poking the griffin with a hoof. Hey, Mr. Chicken? 
Are you sleeping? Mr. Chicken? She poked him again. Uh, I think I have to go. I and I... I'm sorry? Sophia took a step back from the dead creature. She felt bad. Something was really wrong now. It wasn't the first time she was in front of a dead creature. Not even a dying one, but... She never really stopped to contemplate it before. Now, if we were talking about your average pony, this would be a perfect moment to make her face the horrors of a world where brothers kill each other in a constant struggle for survival. Too bad this is a story about puppy smiles. Um, well, I hope you get well soon, but now I really, really have to go. Sorry. The fool kissed the griffin goodbye through her helmet and jumped on her scooter, dashing away. Hey, Mr. Voice, are you there? Affirmative. All systems operational. Why pretty ponies hurt each other? The filly frowned. Morning. This routine is not meant for socializing. Puppy sighed and kept scooting towards the pink arrow on her compass. Um, Mr. Voice, did that chicken say something about a daughter? Affirmative. It is set as objective for secondary mission. Bad news, new buddies. Puppy pondered for a moment, stopping the scooter. Can you show me where she is? Affirmative. Henrietta Firebright, set as new primary target. Puppy looked at the pink arrow disappearing from the compass and reappearing again at the same point. Uh, I don't think it worked. Affirmative. New mission objective correctly set. Puppy shrugged. Operating the mumbo jets in the spacesuit was Mr. Voice's job. If he said it was right, then it had to be so. Let's roll! Day 5. Time. Approximately 1400 p.m. Location. 165th Brigade Field Headquarters. Salt Marshes. Warning. Several breaches in the containment. Warning. Compass offline. Warning. Radio offline. Warning. Medical system offline. Warning. Breach in the helmet. Warning. Pink agent detected. Repair talisman activated. Uh, I think that I stepped on something. Puppy tried to get to her hooves, but stumbled and fell again. I feel dizzy. A couple of road signs in front of the filly stated, Attention! Minefield! And Military Zone! Restricted Access! Debris and broken pieces of atfall lay strewn across the road around her. The entire chunks were missing from the route ahead. Quite incredibly, the scooter lay a couple of meters away from the filly, showing almost no signs of danger or damage. Hey, Mr. Voice, why did the road go boom? Thick pink smoke poured out from the holes in the suit and the cracks in her helmet. Analyzing. The cause for the explosions is a landmine. Radio is online. Helmet integrity restored. Puppy frowned for a moment. What's a landmine? No, wait. It's gonna take forever, right? With you using fancy words and me trying not to get angry and we start arguing again. I need to be... Uh, I need a professional here. Call Miss Voice. Opening communication bridge. Please wait. Compass online. Medical system restored. Loading personal data for subject 001. Puppy smiles. Subject deceased. Condition stable. All clear. After not even five minutes, the suit was almost prepared. Mostly taking materials from various pieces of junk that Puppy kept in her pockets. The fool wasn't very selective with the stuff she decided to keep. If it was shiny and colored, it was a go. And the suit's repair spell wasn't picky either. Anything that contained glass, metal, or plastic was good enough. Uh, hello, hello! This is Salt Cube Dome, emergency line. Sorry, but at the moment all personnel are dead. Please call again when the services have been restored. Bye-bye! Hold on, Miss Voice, it's me, Puppy. Oh, Puppy, hi there. It's been a while. What's going on? Did you find the thing I asked you? I'm ready for activating transfer protocol as soon as you are. Um, no. Sorry, Miss Voice. Actually, I need help. 
Oh, don't worry, I've been waiting here for, what, 200 years? I can wait another couple centuries. So, what do you need? Well, I was dashing like a wonderbolt on my new scooter, and suddenly... Wait, wait, wait. You have a new scooter? Is it red? You bet your saddle. Scootatastic! Is it fast, super fast, or double super fast? It's like the one you see on the signs with Scootaloo on top, and all the stars around. You have to try it. It's totally crazy. Ah, now I feel green. You have to find me that prototype badly body so I can try it. Promise me. Sure, Pinkie Pie swear. Puppy tried to poke her eye, but the Elmo's a problem. Yay. Okay, okay. Back on topic. You wanted just to tell me about the scooter? Uh, no, actually. I have a problem of exploding roads. You see, Mr. Voice says that there's some sort of mining thing, but I can't see the miners. And I don't think that mines go boom. Well, it depends upon what you're mining, but I can see your point. So the road's exploding, and there are no miners there. Please, I need you to take a look around. Do you see something like a, uh, a flat and large flying pan with a orange light on the top? Should be like an ugly green or a sadness gray. Puppy smiled. Yay, I see it. No, wait, there's more. It's full of them. There are orange lights everywhere. It's like fireflies. Wow. Oh, so we're speaking of that kind of mine. Okie dokie. I need to see them myself. Wait a second. The hood of the helmet flickered for a moment. Then the whole helmet lit up with targeting signals each for one of the mines that suit sensors located. Wow, 45 and still counting. This reminds me of a game I used to play a lot. P7's voice paused while the sensor finished detecting all the mines. Done. Now there's a path. You just do as I say and we'll be on their side lickety split. Day five. Time approximately 14.45 p.m. Location. 165th Brigade Headquarters, Salt Marshes. The base was mostly intact. A line of big hangars stood in front of a large court with low armored buildings on the sides. The front gate had a couple of automated guns, but a large battle tank had crashed into it, almost destroying the entire structure and effectively blocking the entrance for anything bigger than a pony. Puppy stopped for a moment, to rummage inside the tank before entering the base. Whoa! This thing is full of shiny stuff! Look at this one! The fool took out a large shell with a red band on the head. It was big, probably used as ammunition for the tank's main gun. It's pretty! Hey, there's more! This one's black, and this one's blue! <laughs> After cannibalizing the tank's ammo rack, Puppy finally decided to venture inside the base. Other tanks lay in the middle of the courtyard, simply abandoned in place and mostly devoured by the rust in the climate of the swamp. Strange plants grew up all over the place and out of the windows. At first glance, Puppy couldn't see any sign of the griffin's daughter, so she did the most logical thing. Here, chick, 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 coot, coot, coot. Still nothing. How strange. Maybe she's sleeping. Warning. Hostile detected. Distance, 150 meters. A large creature poked its head out from one of the small buildings. It was some sort of lion, but way bigger, and when it stepped out from the hole in the building, Puppy saw that it had a pair of leathery wings and a segmented tail that ended a long stinger, dripping with green goo. Analyzing. Manticore. Threat level. Lethal. Ah, uh, I don't think that's a chicken I'm looking for. Puppy trot towards the beast, completely ignoring the warnings. After all, this one was half lion too. Maybe he and the girl she was looking for were cousins. Hi, I'm Puppy Smiles. Have you seen my mom or a little chicken with a kitty cat tail? The fell beast gazed down at the young pony and sniffed the air. Then stepped back and started growling. Somehow it seemed scared of Puppy Smiles. Do you understand me? Pretty please? With a cherry on top? She has two wings and a beak, and she's kind of small. Well, I'm actually not sure how small, but I guess she's kind of small. Oh, 
Are you listening to me, Mr. Kitty Cat? The manticore roared and hit Puppy with a paw, knocking her some ten meters away, then turned tail and ran inside half-ruined buildings. When the filly had finally stopped rolling, she got to her hooves and stuck her tongue out in the general direction of the beast's lair. Bleh! Meanie cat! I'm gonna go find the chicken all by myself, then! The filly frowned. Gee, if every pony here is as kind and pretty as this, I can see where the chicken girl is hiding. The second building was in a lot better condition, and Puppy tried to peek inside. Is any pony here? She saw a soft green light coming from a working computer screen. The filly trod over to the building. Looking at the bright light, it was a small office, with a couple of desks and the remains of a line of filing cabinets mostly destroyed by a fire. On the screen, there was a single line. Please insert password. Did we already say that reading wasn't Puppy's trump card? P L E Z Z. Okay, you got the message. Password? Oh, I know, I know. Puppy smiles. P U P. Hey, this is fun. After three failed tries, the terminal activated security lockdown and the filly grew bored of playing Write Your Name. She was a filly on a mission, after all. Well, a lot, a lot of missions, actually. So she had to keep moving. Yay. The hangars looked mostly intact from the outside, but their roofs had collapsed a long time ago. The only thing left on the inside was a bunch of ruins and rubble, leaving nothing more than a rotten pile of bricks with a shiny facade. Puppy went through the various hangars, finding only rubbish that she decided to keep just in case. The filly noticed that sometimes a cute shiny metal plate or some glassy bubbles disappeared, but she wasn't too sure why they did it or where they went. Continuing her search, Puppy explored another building. This one sported an observation tower, and some very thick walls and a single entrance with no windows at ground level. Inside the building there was a little space, and it was occupied with the remnants of a campfire, a couple of mattresses and some empty food cans in the corner. There was even a low table with a broken radio transmitter on it, and an upturned pile of boxes that virtually occupied the stairs that led to the tower. The voice of the suit suddenly came to life. Destination reached. New position. Rainy Day's camp. Wait a moment. What'd you say? Mom's here? Mom! It's me! Puppy! Mom! Maybe she was upstairs. Puppy galloped up to the top of the tower. The stairs were old, but solid and they led to a small room with its entrance in the middle of the floor, and a control panel with each on its four sides. The walls were replaced by large open windows, so it was impossible to keep an eye all over the base of the tower. But the room was empty. Puppy stopped for a moment and looked all around. Where's Mom? Mr. Voice, you said she was here. Why do you keep lying to me? Warning. This program is not designed for social interaction. You... You! Why every time I try to scold you, do you say that? You are a bad voice, and you should feel bad. Make me speak with Miss Voice. She understands me. She cares. Opening communication bridge. P7's voice replaced the one of the suit's internal systems. Hi there. Thank you for calling. We're sorry, but all the personnel are dead. Please call again when somebody has. It's me, Puppy. Hey, Miss Voice. Oh, hi again, Puppy. You call a lot lately. Do you feel lonely? A bit. Ah, uh, but I need to ask you a thing. It's important. Puppy frowned. Where's my mom? Uh, give me some minutes. Processing the data, comparing results. Object not found. I'm sorry, puppy. I can't say where your mom is. But if I correctly read the data in your suit, you should be on her last known position. Puppy waited for a moment, trying to understand that torrent of difficult words. Uh, say it again, please. Your mom was here, but now she's gone. Maybe if you look around carefully, you'll find something useful to locate her. But, where? Puppy was losing her confidence. She'd been really sure that she would find her mother here. Now that it's, she's had to try this, it's been a hole in the water, she was beginning to lose hope. Let me help, okie dokie. 
Now be a nice pony and wait while I scan the area. And here we go. Look, a data disc on the console. Puppy trot over to the data disc and nudge it with a hoof. Ah, it reminds me of that thing Soft Air gave me. Puppy connected it to her suit. Does it say where is mom? It's an audio file. It has some recordings on it. Let's see. Hey, it's quite old. 200 years. Want to hear it now? Or later? Um, yeah. Sure. Play it. A female voice came from the suit's speakers, and Puppy's eyes widened. Mom, it was her at last. But something was wrong. She was coughing. Was she ill? Day 14. I'm running <laughs> out of Radaway. Right the cloud seems to <laughs> move, but the whole place is still a death trap. The voice paused for a moment, and there was a sound of some pony drinking. Damn, I hate this world, and I hate <laughs> zebras and the princesses. They killed us all. And the only thing that keeps me from becoming crazy is at least that puppy is safe in the stable. There was another long pause. I'm sorry. What hellhole of a world I've brought you into. I... The mare's breast became quick and shallow. She was crying. Puppy jumped on her hooves. Mom! Don't cry, I'm fine. I'm alright, Mom. Mom! Please don't cry, I... I'll be a good pony, but please don't cry. I... I can go back to the gray place and say the magic words and go inside right now. Please don't be mad at me. I... I have to stay strong. Puppy's safe. She's in the stable. I... must believe this. Now, what about me? Seems that the South was... only hit in a couple of main cities. The radiation there should be less... <laughs> dangerous. But the trip is long and I don't think I... Have the strength now. The tape interrupted for several seconds. Then another voice finally started again with Rainy Days speaking. Day 16. Fuck. I'm pissing blood, but at least the coughing's gone. I need to move now or it'll be too late. This is for Party Star and Soft Air. If you're still alive and find this recording, I'm moving south. I'll try to reach the tunnel under Sugar Top Mountain along Route 52. I'll be waiting for you there. I hope you find shelter in the maintenance rooms inside the tunnel. They should be shielded from the worst effects of the radiation. There was a short pause. Bloody Luna. It's snowing green again. Fuck you all. The ministries, the goddesses. What did you do to Equestria? This was a blessed land. Why didn't you stop before it was too late? Puppy. I miss you so much. I'd gladly die if I could see you just one more time. Puppy heard the voice of her mother and curled up on the floor. She wasn't able to react. Her mom was lost somewhere in the south, and she was dying. The filly wanted to see her mother right now, to hug her, to show her that everything was alright. But it wasn't. But after all, Puppy knew for a fact that her mom was the best pony ever. Her mother was going to be fine for sure. Mom said that she was going south to some sort of tunnel. Maybe she was there right now. Puppy couldn't simply stop and wait here for the sadness to devour her heart. But there was still hope. Miss Voice? Are you still there? Negative. Communication interrupted. How can I be of help? The suit's voice quickly replied. Oh. It's... You, Mr. Voice. I, uh... Need to go to another place? Some sort of tunnel under a sugar mountain? Affirmative. Tunnel Town is set as the new destination on the compass. A new pink arrow appeared on the helmet's HUD. Perfect. And then let's get- Don't you dare move a single hoof, you fool! The high-pitched voice interrupted Puppy. The filly turned herself towards the speaker and saw the silhouette of a winged creature that was a little smaller than an adult pegasus. Now, keep your hooves where I can see them and tell me what you're doing here. The young griffin ducked and tumbled into the room as a large lion snapped in the air where she had just been seconds earlier. The jaws of the manticore 
bit at the iron of the window's frame, and the beast retreated for a moment, only to renew its assault. This time the frame bent, and the per per predator was able to force its way in, up to its wings. The manticore retreated again, but the next time it was going to break inside the tower, and no pony was going to stop it. Fuck! That nah, was close. Hit the stairs! The young griffin launched itself down the stairs, grabbing Puppy with a claw. Where'd that thing come from? Uh, hi, I'm Puppy Smiles. The filly wasn't totally sure what was going on right now, or that it was the right time to induce herself, but being dragged around like abused luggage left her with very little to do. Ah, shut your trap. Ah, fuck. Why is everything going south? And the griffin stopped partway down the stairs when she saw that the manticore was too large to fit inside the hatch of the control room. She drew a white gun with a yellow line that ran down the barrel and emptied it into the monster's gnarling face, forcing it to backpedal into the control room and give up the chase for the moment. Good kitty. Stay! A terrible roar came from upside, followed by the sound of claws tearing at the concrete. Perfect. Just perfect. Now he's angry. Uh, hi, Mrs. Chicken. Can you let me down, pretty please? Pretty what? I ain't no chicken. Say that again and I'll... With the sound of metal being rent and torn asunder, the upper entrance of the stairs was blocked off by one of the control panels from the room above. The manticore had trapped the two girls inside, and now the only exit was that narrow door at ground level. Ah, fuck. He's smart. Not. Fair. Footnote. Level up. Four. New perk added. Heave ho! You're becoming a pro at throwing things. Every object you throw...